move right in and get started. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Jessica Sagara, um, and we work in the Department of Community Enhancement for Chesterfield County. Um, as I said earlier, we're recording the session, and um, I'm first going to pass it on to uh, Dan, the department director, to do some more introductions. Hello, Dan Cohen. I'm the director of community enhancement. I have Nick Fico over here, who's housing and real estate coordinator, and Sarah, Sarah Chua, who is the community liaison for the Department of Community Enhancement. Um, I've been here about four years. The department's been in existence for about six years. You can see on the screen what our mission statement is. It is a very interesting department in the sense that it is an amalgamation of many different kinds of things. As you can see, property maintenance, code enforcement. We basically run a mini public works program and I keep Chesterfield beautiful program, as I like to call it. Um, Jessica and Nick and Sarah, to, to a degree, are part of the real estate housing and revitalization component with Carl Schloud. And we also manage all our federal CDG home program uh, uh, programs as well, such as this one, as well as we did an emergency rental assistance program and uh, our opera funding, which we got from the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, welcome. Thank you for coming today. Uh, we're all here for the balance of the of the presentation. I'm turning it back over to Jessica for the uh, for the presentation. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Um, so today uh, we are going to go over a few things related to the county's um, grant cycle for the CDBG and home programs, um, specifically the annual action plan that we are preparing for FY23. So I'll give a little bit of an overview of the uh, county CDBG and home programs first. Um, it'll be a little bit of a um, of a repeat session for some of you who have joined before, but it'll be new information for some of you as well. Um, We'll give an overview of the application process that we went through for FY23 back in the fall, um, and then look at the annual action plan goals and priorities. Um, a look at the budget strategy we are uh, recommending for FY23 for the use of the funds, uh, and then we'll uh, give you information on the next steps in the process and allow some time for comments and questions. So the Community Devel Development Block Grant is a grant that the county receives uh, every year from HUD. We receive about 1.4 to 1.5 million annually. Um, and this grant gives us uh, a lot of options for uh, benefiting low and moderate income people in the county. Um, that graphic down there kind of gives you a, a sense of the different possibilities from job trainings to health services and senior services or housing and home repair and different housing assistance programs. Um, also public facilities, that sort of thing, all to benefit um, low and moderate income residents of the county. So that kind of gives you another uh, sense of the eligible activities there. It's wide range. We could do infrastructure improvement, parks improvements, um, code enforcement. We focus a lot of, on home repair, um, a lot of different different options there. Um, the main, the main way to show eligibility for CDBG funding for a project or program is that it meets a national objective. Um, so there's three main national objectives. The first and most common being the um, commonly used, the low and moderate uh, benefit national objective. Uh, and under that are four different categories. The first being area benefit, where um, the project or program benefits uh, everyone in, a, in one particular area. So an example would be, and it would have to be a low and moderate income area, so where at least 51% of, um, of the residents meet HUD's criteria for low, low or moderate income, which is 80% or less area median income. Um, and that an example of that would be like parks improvements in one of those neighborhoods. Um, and then there's also the limited clientele category, which is where um, at least half of the of the beneficiaries of a project or program are low or moderate income. So that an example of that is like financial literacy training for um, for low and moderate income residents in the county, where there's direct service involved to um, to people in that in that income category. Um, and then there's housing activities under CDBG. So uh, anything from home repair or other housing assistance for, and this has to be all um, low and moderate income residents in, in the county. 
And lastly, the jobs um, retention and creation activities, that's where um, that's where CDBG funds are used for activities that help to create or retain permanent jobs for low and moderate income residents. Um, the next national objective is the slum and blight national objective, which is uh, pretty rarely used, but it's, it's when um, there's some like deterioration or need of revitalization or redevelopment in an area that's not necessarily one of these low mod areas in the county and um, where funds are needed to, to assist in the redevelopment. That, that national objective could be used. And then lastly, the urgent need uh, national objective is really rarely used. I haven't seen it used in my time at the county, um, but it's really aimed to use funds when it's needed for disaster recovery. So like from flooding or tornado damage, that sort of thing. So the home grant is the Home Investment Partnerships Grant Program. Um, this one is, uh, we receive about 500 to 600,000 each year. We also receive this funding from HUD, um, just has different uh, regulations than CDBG. And this grant is used specifically to construct or maintain affordable housing for low income persons. So really about housing creation and, and retention. So um, this is just a few of the eligible activities for, for the home program. We focus a lot on homeowner housing rehab, down payment assistance and housing construction. Um, so beginning in uh, November of last year, we started the FY23 application process. Uh, we began with a public info session on the 19th of November, where we went through um, how the process would play out uh, to apply for CDBG and home funding for FY23. Uh, this was the first year that we utilized the Zoom grants, grants management platform. The uh, screenshot there kind of shows what, what it looks like to an extent. Um, so applications were submitted on Zoom grants. Um, it was available from the 15th of November to January 14th. Uh, and overall, we received applications from a wide variety of nonprofit organizations in the social service, housing, and community development fields. Um, so a bit about the annual action plan itself. This is a document that kind of guides the use of, oh, sorry, um, the use of the county CDBG and home funds each year. Uh, and it's where we show our, um, how we're going to uh, meet the, the goals that were laid out in our consolidated plan, which is a five year plan um, that for the use of the funds. So beginning in FY21, we had we started the current plan that we're in and developed these three goals, which were the create, create and sustain affordable housing, preserve and improve existing communities, and promote healthy and self-sufficient families. So our annual action plan, which is a plan that we develop every year, um, really hones in on the projects and programs that we're gonna that we're gonna fund with CDBG and Home in that particular year in order to meet any of these three goals um, and make progress towards them. So the um, the point of this uh, this public meeting is to kind of gain input on our goals and priorities um, for this year in order to de develop this annual action plan. So in addition to meeting um, one of the goals of the annual action plan for FY23, uh, during this application process, we already we also developed a few uh, specific priorities. We were looking at um, at trying to get some applications for some new and innovative projects projects that focused on addressing the needs of seniors in the county, um, and then projects that are focused in one or more of the target areas that we that we developed. And those de uh, those target areas include the Route 1 corridor, Eastern Midlothian Turnpike corridor, the Eastern Hull Street Road corridor, and Ettrick. Um, and those were chosen based on the fact that uh, there is a significant portion of the concentration of, um, of low mod areas in those along those corridors and in Ettrick and uh, just where we see, see need for, for investment. Um, so this map here, there's sort of a lot going on, but the, the cross hatched areas show those target areas, while the, the um, areas highlighted in the yellow gold color are those areas of the county that are um, low and moderate majority uh, residents. And that's where like those low mod area activities could take place. Um, so we also developed some key evaluation criteria for this year um, in order to be uh, considered for CDBG and home funding. Um, we looked at projects that demonstrated a significant leveraging of funding. So where uh, we saw 
uh, a good bit of match funding for the project or program, um, a strong sustainability plan or long term strategy. So projects that we could see having a long term impact in the county. And then lastly, we looked for some previous experience uh, in using CDBG or home program funding. So uh, for FY23, we, um, we have some estimated allocations here. So we did not, um, we have not yet received our official award letter from HUD for FY23 yet. This is fairly common. Um, it usually gets to us around this time, but sometimes we don't have it yet until the, as we're going through the budget cycle. And we just have to kind of move forward because we get this budget approved along with the rest of the county budget um, for FY23. So um, right now we're moving forward with estimating our FY23 award based on what we received last, this year, so in FY22. So the CDBG award was um, about 1.5 million um, in CDBG. And then we also have some repurposed funds from, from years past, so funds that were left over and we can now repurpose, and that amounts to about 96,000. So our total CDBG award is expected to be about uh, 1.6 million in FY23. Um, and for the home program award, same thing. We're estimating based on the FY22 award, which is about 580,000. Um, as I said, so these amounts are contingent on the official award notification from HUD. So any um, amendments that have to be made to the budget, we will you know, make sure that's a, public, a part of the public process as well. So um, overall, we did receive um, a lot more requests for funding than our ability than what we have ability to fund. Um, so we really wanted to, we took a look at balancing uh, projects that really met our annual action plan goals and priorities um, and and with some input from other county departments is how we kind of created this budget strategy here. Um, so I'll first start with the CDBG budget. So we're working under CDBG. We are working with um, with two different regulatory caps from HUD. So with public service activities, so any pro programs that are in the realm of uh, providing social services like, um, like job training or uh, youth services, homeless services, that sort of thing, they all fall under this 15% regulatory cap. So we are unable to provide more funding than 15% of our total award, which based on the estimated allocations equals about $230,000 for FY23. Um, and then under, uh, we also have a 20% admin cap. So, uh, you, and usually we fall between 10 to 15% and this year it's gonna be about 12%. So that leaves about 73% um, for the housing and community development activities, uh, which do not have any sort of cap involved in those. So a bit more information about um, the process for pub the public service uh, application. So we did have a very competitive pool of applications there. There's uh, certainly a lot of need and, and great, great projects and programs out there, um, but we're working with that 15% cap. And what we did was we ended up um, consulting with our uh, Department of Social Services Department and Office of Diversity and Inclusion to receive input and perspective on the greatest needs in these areas of social service um, from these from staff in these in these departments so that we could really make sure we're honing in on what where the greatest need is at this point um, as they work they they tend to work more directly with with the individuals that we would be serving with these programs. Um, so through all that, we uh, we're ending up recommending funding for programs that clearly meet a CDBG national objective and provide a direct service addressing a specific need in the community. Um, so a overview of the areas of direct service include some financial literacy and workforce services, senior services, youth services, homeless services, and assistance to victims of domestic violence. Uh, under the housing category for CDBG, we actually ended up having more space in the CDBG, CDBG budget this year um, because a lot of the housing applications we received, some of them were, were able to fund with the county's ARPA funding instead of CDBG this year. Um, we have a housing trust fund set aside in that ARPA funding, so they're going to be a few projects are going to be taken care of with that funding. 
So that um, that let us have more room in the budget to focus on home repair in FY23. There is a great need for this. A lot of our existing programs have long wait lists, so we're very happy to be able to provide more funding to support these programs in uh, FY23. Um, and we're going to have an emphasis with the additional funding on serving seniors who are in need of home repair. Uh, so under the home program, which is specifically about housing, um, there is one uh, one regulatory minimum actually where 15 about at least 15 percent, which is about ninety thousand dollars of our home fund allocation must be set aside for a community housing development organization or CHODO activities. So that um, me that essentially means uh, activities that are creating new affordable housing. So either re uh, acquiring and rehabbing an existing house and selling to a new an income qualified home buyer or new construction and selling to an income qualified home buyer. So um, our focus in, in FY23 will be on those activities as well as home buyer down payment assistance and owner occupied home rehab. So um, as I as I said, the, the intention of this meeting is to gain some comments on an insight and input from all of you on our goals, priorities and budget strategy for this year. Um, we have made our recommendations to the board and county admin on the uh, official, um, you know, not official, the uh, actual numbers and, and funding recommendations for each program and project, and that will be made public by March 7th. Um, but for now, we're looking for just some input on what I presented so far today. So I'm going to open it up for some comments or questions at this point. Don't, don't all comment at once. Well, you also there's also going to be plenty of time to mm -hmm. to comment in the future. We have a 30 day. I'll move on to the next steps. So we the draft budget recommendations and draft annual action plan document will be on the community enhancement website at that um, link below no later than March 7th. Um, as I mentioned earlier, though, so the CDBG and home budget gets approved by the Board of Supervisors as part of the you know, entire county budget for FY23. So there also will be a lot of opportunity to comment and provide input um, during the budget meetings uh, that, that the budget department sets up. So there's virtual meetings um, for each uh, magisterial district beginning March 10th. Uh, there's more information on that on the budget website. Uh, and then there's also the official public hearing on the on the FY23 budget, which is on March 23rd. Um, that will be live streamed and you can submit comments ahead of time via uh, an online forum for for comments specifically for that meeting. Um, and then once that all goes through, we will have um, the budget adoption meeting on April 6th and we will then submit our annual action plan to HUD at some point in May or June, um, but we still have to receive that that official award notification. So basically, if we if we don't receive that soon, we'll basically just have to go back to the board um, with an amendment, which will have another public process to revise uh, any any changes to the budget based on that award notification. Is someone trying to ask you? Um, I had a question, Jessica. Um, do we know um, like the amount that you're proposing for different organizations to receive for funding yet? Um, thanks for asking that, Kendra. So to clarify, we are going to have the draft the the draft budget recommendations on, for public review on our website no later than March 7th. Um, we have made those recommendations for each organization and the programs and projects to the the county admin and budget department, um, but we're just it's going to be public in a few days. Um, we. Uh, yeah, it's going to be on our website on March 7th, and then it'll also be because it's part of the county budget. It'll also be on the budget website and you know available to view yep. through that process as well. Awesome, thank you. Sure. Any other? comments or questions, um, you can ask them now or that's our contact information. Um, keep an eye out on uh, that uh, the, the community enhancement website because that's where we'll put a lot of this information, even information to you know regarding the budget process. We'll, we'll link to 
all of that stuff on our website. So you have um, you know ample options to um, to pr produce com uh, pr you know submit comments and and all that. And we, we like to see comment participation because we, we do have to submit to HUD any public comments and then we're happy to see uh, see any you know positive comments or or any input that you, you want to provide um, as part of this annual action plan process as well. And I just want to I'll actually ask some of the folks who submitted applications a question. As Jessica mentioned, this is the, this is the first year that we actually used an online platform called Zoom Grants. Uh, I'm curious for those who care to comment, how did you find it the submittal this year? And I asked that question also to let you know that if you apply for funds in just in, in, in Henrico County, they'll be using the same platform for sure. And I do think that the city is going to that platform as well. But what, what you have any feedback there? How was it? Was it easier? Um, I can comment. This is Kristen Vinagro from Richmond Habitat for Humanity, and I thought it was really, really easy to submit. Um, it, it was a piece of cake and it made it much easier than driving to the courthouse and uh, submitting. Um, and I didn't have any like glitches. I like that you could like re-log in and it saved all your work. And we submitted two different applications and it was it was easy to do both. Okay. That's great to hear. Any other comments with respect to, to Zoom? So this is Katie. I'm from YWC Richmond. Um, we submitted our Henrico ESG through Zoom grants last year. And because we already had a portal set up with Zoom, we use it for both. And that does get a little confusing um, moving from application to application at the beginning. Um, but aside from that, uh, it's a great, it was a great process. Did it let you pre-populate any of your information from that previous? From our Henrico application? Yeah. No, it did not. Hmm. So it was the strange part when I say connecting is if I log in and happen to look at our Henrico application for whatever reason, I couldn't then like go to the search bar and search for the Chesterfield CDBG grant, which was open. I had to go to the link you guys had provided and go in that way. Once I had started that grant, I could access it, but there was some strange like connection there at the beginning with inside the portal. Okay, okay. You. got it. Thank you. Anyone else? I see one other hand up. Uh, maybe, There's no. Definitely a hand up. <laughs> We, we can only see a limited number of, of video tiles right now. <laughs> so unsure who stands up. Renee, Renee Eldridge. Yep, there you go. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Um, I would have to say um, in years past, I have been on review committees to look at, at grants to see um, who receives and who does not. And I will say that I, I have not looked to see what um, your portal looks like now, but if you had a uniform application, so everybody's submitting the same thing um, as far as, you know, uh, letters or financials, whatever, whatever your application is right now, if they were uniform, then you could flip through a whole lot easier and say, okay, this organization has this, this organization has that as opposed to uh, flipping through all different types of information to, to determine which one that you feel is, is more worthy uh, of getting the funds. Do you, yeah, you understand we, what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, certainly. Thank you, Renee. I think we, we did struggle with that too before we moved to Zoom Grants. Now or on Zoom Grants, it is a bit more, more uniform because there's a specific set of questions that have to be answered by every every um organization and it is uniform yeah there's no difference except except entity to entity, right except no for difference. the type of funding you apply yeah, for exactly that's what i was going to say yeah. Okay. yeah so that and like the same documents have to be uploaded um and all that so we we have made changes to to create more uniformity does your uniformity cross uh county lines no that was the question i asked which is a question for 
the Zoom grants team that they'll possibly be able to fix on their end, which is I'm in a lo I, they're all over the country. So I would imagine they have this question in other places, but just, you know, we work across jurisdictions. Can our people put in, um, can they reuse their office data, their point of contact data, all that kind of thing? Um, and there, there may be a reason why that they don't do that. It may be that each applicant is the application for that year for that specific time period and how things get saved. We, we're just not the developers of the software. Yeah, and I think Renee, it's not the questions themselves. We we don't necessarily work with other localities to make them uniform either. Because uh, I we, see what you're asking we, is if the, the applications are the same across all localities. And, and that would that the the reason I think they're really different is each locality has different priorities, mm -hmm. and um, we're not awarding funds as a region yet. Maybe one day mm -hmm. we'll do that. I was just thinking about people who who do look regionally for funding. That would that would be a big plus. Yep. Yeah. Well, we we did talk about that with our regional housing analysis about a future of uh regionally providing grant funding or something like that for things that are done regionally homelessness is one of the ones we currently tackle regionally mm -hmm. so you're you're spot on with um yeah some of these things we should be funding as a region versus you know what we're doing and they're more of a region question versus a neighborhood question mm -hmm. thank you thank you any other comments or questions All righty. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you all so much. Um, like I said, I'll, I'm going to put the a PDF of the slides up on the website as well as the recording um, so that if you want to review it or or um, send to another colleague or, or or someone else to review, uh, we'll have that and we'll have all this information um, that I have in the next steps up here also on there. Um, check back, I think, you know, no later than Monday, Monday the 7th for for everything that we've discussed so and feel free to reach out via email or phone call with any additional follow-up questions or comments all right appreciate all right. your time thank you all thank you bye, -bye. bye, -bye. thank you